Hey guys, I am Danny with Summer Sky Gardens. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about how to raise butterflies. Seeing butterflies visit my garden is probably one of my favorite things about gardening. I just think they're so magical and peaceful and I love that they help pollinate everything. As always, if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and consider subscribing so that I can see you here every time with me. And if you want more day-to-day -day inspiration, be sure to check me out on Instagram at Summer Sky Gardens. I'll also have a blog post uh, linked below with kind of more details and then a link to my Amazon shop where you can find my butterfly enclosure. Now you might be asking yourself, well, why should I try to raise butterflies? Why take them out of the garden? And you can certainly leave them there and a lot of times they're gonna be just fine. But of course, um, if you have a lot of birds like I do or other kind of pests, then there is some concern that the caterpillars may get eaten. And especially for us here in Texas, um, trying to raise the monarch population, I do my best to try to catch any monarch caterpillars I can out in the garden and put them in the butterfly enclosure so that they're safe and they can successfully become monarch butterflies. Um, I also think this is a really, really fun activity to do with your kids. My four-year-old um, especially has really enjoyed this, finding the caterpillars, seeing them feed and grow, seeing them form the chrysalis, and then seeing them become butterflies and releasing them out into the garden. So if you're looking for something fun, something with science and nature to do with your kids, this is a great activity. I'll also uh, link below, I have a blog post about building a butterfly garden um, and some different plants that you might want to incorporate outside in order to attract the um, adults and to lay their eggs in order to grow uh, the caterpillars. Now one thing you want to consider is the native butterflies in your area and what kind of plants they're attracted to. And remember, you need to plant both nectar plants for the adults and host plants for them to lay their eggs, for the females to lay their eggs and grow caterpillars. So you're going to see different ones for different types of butterflies. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to talk about monarch butterflies because that's something I'm very passionate about is growing the monarch butterfly population, which has dwindled tremendously in the last 20 to 30 years. I have various types of milkweed out in my garden, which is what monarch caterpillars eat. So I will show you how I go out and find the caterpillars, how I create the enclosure for them, and then kind of the process of watching them grow. But it's going to be a little bit different depending on every um, type of butterfly. So you just wanna look at what are the native butterflies in your area, what plants are they attracted to, so that you can either try to attract them into your garden or to have those plants on hand for the caterpillars. All right, so let me grab one of my milkweeds that has caterpillars on it. Right here. Um, so this is an aquatic milkweed. I have three types of milkweed out in my garden. I have a giant milkweed, an aquatic milkweed, and a butterfly weed. I have found uh, monarch caterpillars on all of them. Um, this year, the giant milkweed was the most popular, and I potted a couple of the aquatic milkweeds so that I could easily move these in and out of the butterfly enclosure. I put them in the butterfly enclosure when I have caterpillars, and when I don't, I just put the pots back out in the garden. So when you're going out to look for caterpillars, it's pretty easy to spot. Um, you want to start to look for leaves that look like they've been eaten away. Um, if the caterpillars are very, very small, then you may only see like little bitty holes or the edges of the leaves bitten off. Once they get bigger, you will see a plant get like stripped down. So it's pretty easy to catch them. Once you find the caterpillars, just be very gentle with taking them off the plant. Um, for the purpose of monarch caterpillars, milkweed is um, um, not necessarily poisonous, but very irritating. So if you're handling caterpillars and milkweed, be sure and wash your hands with soap and water when you're all done before touching your face. I have seen people get um, milkweed irritation in their eyes and get a really bad eye infection from that. Now, once you get your caterpillars and you have your host plant, you wanna put them, um, you wanna make sure that the host plant is free of any other bugs or insects or disease. You wanna go put them inside a butterfly enclosure. And I like to put like either a towel or paper towels on the bottom of the butterfly enclosure because these guys poop a lot <laughs> and it just makes cleanup a lot easier. 
Depending on what kind of butterfly you're raising, the caterpillars will take anywhere from, you know, a week or two to grow big, um, form their chrysalis. And then once inside the chrysalis, it could be a week or two for them to form a butterfly. So that's kind of how it goes for the monarch caterpillars. It's a couple of weeks that they're eating and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you'll see them migrate somewhere in the enclosure to form a chrysalis, um, which is like their little cocoon and where they will um, turn into butterflies. And once they're in the uh, chrysalis, it will it's green and it will hang there. You don't wanna disturb it once that's happening. So try not to move um, the plant uh, as little as possible. Um, you wanna try to just leave it alone and let it sit there for a week or two. When the butterfly is getting ready to emerge, you'll see it turn really dark brown. And probably within about 24 hours, you're gonna see the butterfly emerge. When the butterfly emerges, it's gonna release kind of some liquidy fluid, kind of like looks like blood. Um, that's fine. That's another reason to have paper towels or a towel at the bottom of the enclosure. Um, the butterfly needs at least a few hours, if not a day, to loosen up her wings, fill the wings with warmth. Butterflies cannot fly unless they are warmed up, usually I think around 80 degrees or warmer. So you want to give them ample, you want to give her ample amount of time to warm her wings up, stretch out fully um, before you release them. I like to keep them in there for a day or two and um, observe them, let my daughter um, play, you know, kind of observe them and then we will go out and release them into our garden. Now caring for the caterpillars and the chrysalis, there's really not much you need to do. Um, you can, um, as long as they have their host plant, they should be fine. Once you have the chrysalis um, hanging, you could come in and kind of spray it with water once a day. I do this sometimes, not do it sometimes. Um, it's fine either way. If you buy butterflies um, from a company, uh, it will tell you to do that and that's totally fine. But I have not done it with my monarch caterpillars and they've been fine without it. Once the butterfly hatches, you wanna provide them with some sugar water. And a very good tip for feeding butterflies, you need to use regular white sugar. Do not use brown sugar, do not use stevia. It needs to be just plain white sugar. Um, look in my blog post below and I will tell you how to make the concoction, but that is something that they may feed on for the first day or two. So it's good to put that like in a little shallow plate or bowl inside the enclosure so that they have something to feed on if they want. All right, enough talking right here. I'm gonna show you how my guys look right here, how my enclosure looks, and where I found them in my garden. And then I'll show you some footage of some previous butterflies that we have grown and released, and kind of how everything went.
you think? She likes you, huh? Yeah. She does like me. You're drinking food off your finger? Mm -hmm. Look at her long tongue. All right, you guys, that's all I have today. I hope that was helpful. This was a pretty quick video, but one that I am very passionate about. Be sure and check out my blog post below for more details, as well as some information about monarch butterflies and ways that you can help raise the migration. I'll see you next time. Bye.